As has been said over these last days, when, after our spiritual questing, our disciplines, our practices, our meditations, we find ourselves in that place where the three levels of life, existence, mind, have melded together to put us in a state that is called Satchitananda or Satori. We're like astronauts who have traveled into outer space. The laws as we knew them no longer apply. So our mind and our body has to adapt. But in order for us to learn those new laws or that new way of relating to life, the only way that we can come to know those laws is by our own experience. But like all those other levels that we've traversed, there are stories. So let's see if this story will help us to bring to awareness another of those subtle laws that become apparent to us in this new place as we relate to life, or life relates to us. Now there's the great King Solomon, and we know that he had great powers. He knew the language of the animals and the birds. He had a magic carpet on which he could traverse the dimensions of life. And he had many other great powers. But we know that at that time also on earth was the great queen of Sheba. And there are many stories of their encounters and the debates that when took place between them. And there was, you might say, some competition. But this story is a story of a time when the Queen of Sheba was visiting the great King Solomon. And he was, as was his bent, expounding that which he had discovered about that which lay beyond the levels of existence. And of course, overriding all of this was that which he more and more expressed was that there was one great law over all which to King Solomon was called God. But after this occasion of intense interaction between Solomon and Sheba, Sheba said to King Solomon, yes, I've listened to all that you've propounded, but there's one thing I cannot accept, and that is the law of matchmaking that you say your God is capable of. I would like to test this. So King Solomon said, well, how would you do so? And the Queen of Sheba said, well, let's go out into your kingdom and find a maiden. And you should take this maiden and put her in the most isolated place. And let's see if this law that you advocate will operate. So the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon went walking out into King Solomon's kingdom and they went from place to place but none of the maidens they encountered seemed to catch 
the queen of Sheba's eye, until they came to a well. And there beside the well was a beautiful young girl drawing water. And Queen of Sheba said, it is she. Take her. And so they approached the maiden. And King Solomon said to her, I would like to take you into my employment. Can we go to your parents and seek permission? So this they did. And King Solomon gave a great deal of wealth to the parents, saying that her, their daughter would be well taken care of, but that she would be in the employ of the king for the next five years. But when the maiden was brought to the palace, she was told that she was to be taken into isolation. In fact, a place had been prepared for her on an island far distant from the palace. There was a great tree, at least 500 years old, hollow, suitable for an abode to be created. So furniture was brought from the palace and it was set up a small door was created, a small window to let in the sun and light, but not big enough for anyone to climb out of. And the maiden was told that this was to be her place. She was greatly distressed, but she was given a loom and instruments to play. And so when she was placed in the tree, she spent her days weaving and became a great and adept weaver. She played the instruments and sang the songs of her youth, even creating new songs from her own being. And the time passed. Queen of Sheba had long since gone back to her own kingdom, but bearing in mind that test that had been put to the king to confirm that which he was expounding. And the years passed, and as it so happened, there was a young man, the son of a great sea captain who plied the oceans of the world. And he was traveling with his father on one of his father's ships. When one day the son said to his father, can I take the wheel? And so his father allowed him to guide the ship across the waters of the ocean. But as the young man was standing at the wheel, a great storm arose. That storm washed across the bows of the ship and tossed the young man into the ocean. All on the ship, his father and those aboard thought he was lost, and his father was greatly distressed and bereft. But in fact, the young man caught a piece of wood that had been washed off the ship with him and was able to float, finding himself on the isolated island on which the great tree stood. After lying exhausted for some time, the young man got up to explore the island. He found trees on which there were fruit, on which he could satiate his hunger. But then, as 
pace he was traversing this place, he saw a great bird. This bird was the pheasant, the servant of King Solomon, who bought food to the maiden in a basket every day. And when the young man saw this great bird flying with a basket in its mouth, he was greatly perplexed. Where was this bird flying to? And then he saw the bird landing at the bottom of this great tree and handing the basket into the small aperture. Now, the young man thought it must be some animal that was being fed, and he was greatly curious. So after the bird had departed, the young man went to explore. Now, over these years, the young maiden had allowed her hair to grow long. And as he passed the window, he saw this hair moving from side to side. And he thought, what kind of animal is this? But when he peered more closely, looking in the window, he saw this beautiful maiden. So he went to the small door and he knocked three times. The young maiden was greatly scared. Not before in those years had there been any sound other than the sound of the birds and the scratching of the animals. So she asked, who is there? The young man told his story, how he'd been washed up on the beach. And, and so they made communication in the window. But it so happened that the great phoenix bird saw what was occurring and went back to King Solomon to relate. Well, of course, King Solomon was greatly pleased by this, but he did not tell the Queen of Sheba at this time. But he did order the bird to carry enough food for both the young man and the woman. Now, in their exchanges, of course, love took place and as it so happened, the young man had carried with him several implements on him when he was washed over the side of the ship. So he had a small mirror and a knife. And he used his knife to cut the vines which covered the apertures. And using his knife, he enlarged the window and the doorway. And so the two were able to meet. Falling deeply in love, the young man asked the maiden to marry him. And so a wedding took place to which the birds and the animals were invited. Now, all of this was relayed to King Solomon, as it was when a child was born to the couple. And so the time had passed, and King Solomon decided that he would have a great feast, to which he would invite the Queen of Sheba to allow her to witness that which had occurred, confirming the law that he had expounded to her. 
And so the young man and the young woman and their child were released from the island and brought to the mainland. But as they were traveling, the young man noticed that there was a tribute at each of the wells along the way. And so he asked, what deity is this that's being worshipped at these wells? Oh no, they were told. These were placed there by the captain of the a ship who lost his son at sea. And tears began to flow down the eyes of the young man. And he told his story. I am that lost son. And so when this came to the ears of the great King Solomon, he immediately sent for the ship's captain to attend a feast. We can only imagine what rejoicing took place at that festivity. The father finding his son. King Solomon quietly rejoicing in the proof, the evidence of what he had already known and the Queen of Sheba learning and herself experiencing this place. What's your experience? We know the synchronicities of life in those levels of mind, existence, movement. But this place in which we find ourselves, Satori, Satchitananda, where all three levels combine and we live in that unified state. What for you? What for you? How would you express this law? Called in this story, the law of matchmaking. How does it differ for us from those experiences of synchronicity that we've had in the ordinary levels of life? What name would you give it? In this story, it's matchmaking. But what's your experience? What is this law? Thank you, thank you.